Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to have knowledge about calendar. In our daily life or in many exams, we may need to find the day on any given date without using any calendar. For example, we may need to find the day on 8th July of 1911 or the day on 27th June of 2016 or you may find questions like these in many exams like if 1st June of 2015 is Thursday then what will be the day on 1st January of 2016 and there are various kind of examples or questions you will see in your daily life or in many exams related to calendar. So in this video, we are going to learn information about calendar, which is very much useful to solve various kind of questions related to calendar. And then we will see various kinds of examples, which will also include examples related to these questions. Now let's get started. First of all, we see what are odd days. So what are odd days? The days which left out of the week are odd, day, odd days. We take an example to better understand it. Suppose we have 8 days. Now we need to find the number of odd days in these 8 days. These 8 days can be written as 7 plus 1 days. Now we know 1 week has 7 days. So these 7 days makes 1 week. But here we see there is only 1 day. And this 1 day is not enough to make a week. So we write this 1 day as it is. Now you see this one day is left out of this week or we can say this one day is extra which is out of this week. So this day is called as odd day. Now we see an another example. Suppose, suppose we have 31 days and we need to find the number of odd days in these 31 days. We can write these 31 days as 7 days plus 7 days plus 7 days plus 7 days plus 3 days. Now each of these 7 days makes 1 week. You see this 7 day makes 1 week. These 7 day make 1 week. And similarly these 7 days makes 1 week each. Now here we see 3 days. These three days are not enough to make a week. So we write these three days as it is. Now we have total one, two, three, four week. So we have four weeks and, and three days. We can see that these three days are left out of these weeks. Or we can say these three days are extra which are out of these weeks. These are not, these three days are not included in these weeks. So these three days are called as odd days. Now the question is how to find the number of odd days. We know what are odd days. Now we have to find the number of odd days. We see here. We have 31 days. Now if we divide it by 7. Or we can say if we divide it by a week. Then that week will cancel out all the week in it that is if we divide this 31 by 7 then that 7 will cancel out all these 7 and the remainder will be 3 and we know in 31 days 3 days are odd days and if we divide 31 by 7 then the remainder is 3 so we find that remainder is and remainder and the odd days are equal what I am what I'm trying to say is, 
if we divide the number of days by 7 or we can also say that if we divide the number of days by a week then this week will cancel out all the weeks and will give us the number of odd days. So we take an example suppose we have 24 days and we need to find the number of odd days in these 24 days. So what we do is we divide 24 by 7. So this, this 7 will cancel out all the weeks or all the 7 days in it and will give us the remaining days which are number of odd days and that will be the remainder. So in this case if we divide 24 by 7 then the remainder is 3 and this is the number of odd days in 24 days. Now we take another example of 286 days. We need to find the number of odd days in these 286 days. So what we do is we divide this 286 by 7. This 7 will cancel out all the weeks all the weeks in these 286 days and will give us the number of remaining days which are number of odd days. In this case if we divide 286 by 7 then the remainder is 6. So these, this is number of odd days. So 6 number of odd days are there in 286 days. Now you must remember this point that number of odd days can only be from 0 to 6 that is number of odd days can have values only from 0 to 6 number of odd days have can have values from 0 to 6 now you see we take an example of 23 odd days suppose we have 23 odd days before we have seen the number of odd days can only be from 0 to 6 and here we see there are 23 odd days. It means this is not the correct value of correct number of odd days. You see these 23 days still have weeks in it. So we divide it by 7 so that the weeks which are in these 23 days will cancel out and the remaining days will be number of odd days. So if we divide 23 by 7 then the remainder will be 2 and this is number of odd days. So we find that 2 is the number of odd days in 23 odd days. So 23, odd day, 23 is not the correct value of odd days. 2 is the correct value of number of odd days. So instead of saying 23 odd days we will say 2 number of odd days. Now, now the next thing you must remember that a leap year has 366 days and an ordinary year has 365 days. A year which is not a leap year called as ordinary year. Now, now the next thing is now the next thing is we will find the number of odd days in leap year. So we know that num number of days in leap year are 366 so we divide this 366 by 7 and the remainder will be the number of odd days in this case if we divide 366 by 7 then the remainder is 2 so 2 is the number of odd days in a leap year now we find the number of odd days in a ordinary year we know Ordinary year has 365 days and if we divide 360 by 365 by 7 then the remainder will be number of odd days and in this case the remainder is 1. So 1 is the number of odd days in ordinary year. So we have got two points that leap year has two odd days and ordinary year has one odd day. You must remember these two points. Now, now the next question is which year is a leap year or ordinary year? We have to find out. We must be able to know which year is a leap year and which year is a ordinary year. So how to check this? So we have two points for this. 
you must remember these two points. If a year is divisible by 4, then the year is leap year. And if a year is not divisible by 4, then the year is ordinary year. Suppose we have year 1984. And now, if we divide it by 4, and if it is divisible by 4, then the, this year will be a leap year. And if this year is not divisible by 4, then this year is a ordinary year. So we check it by dividing this year by 4. Now you must remember that you don't need to divide this complete number by 4. It will take much time. So what we will do is, we take its last two digit and form a number. Yes. So you see, we have this year 1984 and we take its last two digit 84, 8 and 4 and we form this number. Now we divide this two digit number by 4 and if it is divisible by 4 then it will mean that this complete number is divisible by 4 and if it is not divisible by 4 then it will mean that this complete number 1984 is not divisible by 4. So we don't need to divide this complete number by 4. It will take much time. You only need to take its last two digit whatever the number is. You take its last two digit and form this number and divide it by 4 and check if this number is divisible by 4 or not. And if it is divisible by 4, you see if, if year, year is divisible by 4 then it is a leap year. And if it is divisible by 4 then it will, it will be a leap year. And if it is not divisible by 4 then it will be a ordinary year. In this case 84 is divisible by 4. It means that 1984 is divisible by 4. So we say this is a leap year. 1984 is a leap year. Now, now we take few more examples. So we have the year 88. We divide its last two digit. These are 88 and 8 are last two digits. If we divide it by 4, then it is divisible by 4. So it is a leap year. Next year is 2002. If we divide its last two digits by 4, then it is not, these two last two digits are not divisible by 4. So it is not a leap year. Now the next year is 2012. Since 12 is divisible by 4, so it is a leap year. Next year is 1985. 85 is not divisible by 4, so it is not a leap year. Next year is 64. 64 is divisible by 4, so it is a leap year. Next year is 85. 85 is not divisible by 4, so it is not a leap year. Next year is 2015. 15, the last two digits of this year is 15. And 15 is not divisible by 4, so it is not a leap year. Next year is 166. We take its last two digit and the number is 66. 66 is not divisible by 4, so it is not a leap year. Next year is 544. The last two digits are 4 and 4 and number is 44. This 44 is divisible by 4. So this com complete number is divisible by 4 and it means that it is a leap year. Now we talk about century. What are centuries? You see, if a year has last two digits as 0, I repeat, if a year has its last two digits as 0, then it will be called as century. Let us see examples. You see, each of these years, each of these here, years here have its last two digits as 0. You see, last two digits are 0, last two digits are 0 and last two digits are 0. All of these years have their last digits, last two digits as 0. So all of these are century. All these years are century. Now, now how to check if it's, now how to check which of these centuries are leap year and which are ordinary year. You see, we have to remember these two points to check if a, if a century is a leap year or if a century is ordinary year. Now, the point are, if a century is divisible by 400, then it will be a leap year. 
and if a century is not divisible by 400 then it will be a ordinary year let us take few examples here we have century 1600 it is divisible by 400 so it is a leap year next year is 2800 this is divisible by 400 so it is a leap year next century is 200 this is not divisible by 400 so it is not a leap year next century is 1800 it is not divisible by 400 so it is not a leap year it is a ordinary year next century is 2000 this is divisible by 400 so it this year is a or this century is a leap year so now we go ahead now how to know or how to find the number of leap years we know what are leap years but how to find the number of leap years suppose we have 86 years that is we have years from 1 to 86 now we have to find how many of these years are leap years now you may you must notice that if you go ahead then at, at, at every fourth step I repeat at every fourth step you will find a leap year you see at 4 this this 4 is a leap year and then you will find 8 as a leap year and then you will find 12 as a leap year and then so on and in the last you will find 84 as a leap year so I can say that at every fourth step you will find a leap year so to know the or to find the number of leap years in these 86 years we will divide this 86 by 4 because we are we find a leap year at every fourth step so we divide this 86 by 4 and the quotient will be the number of leap years in this case the quotient is 21 so there are 21 leap years in 86 years now now we have a table which is very much important and you must remember this table what you have to remember is that is the first point is 100 years have 5 odd days 200 years have 3 odd days 300 years have 1 odd day and 400 years have 0 odd day now an easy way to remember this table is you write 100, 200, 300, 400 then you write 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 now first you write 5 in front of 100 then you cut or skip or cross this 4 then you go to 3 then you write again 3 in front of 200 years then you go ahead and cross it or skip this 2 then again you write this 1 in front of 300 years now you cannot cross it or skip this because we don't have any number ahead so we write this 0 in front of 400 years this, this was just a way of remembering this table if you have any another, another way of remembering this table then you can do or you can remember by that way now the next thing is here you must notice that, that this 400 is a century and it is a leap year and it have it have 0 or day so we must remember that if a century is a leap year then it will have zero number of odd day I repeat a century which is a leap year will have zero number of odd day you see this is a century but it is not a leap year so it is not necessary that it will have zero odd day but you see 1600 this is a century which is a leap year so it is must that it will have zero number of all days now this is again a century but it is not a leap year so it is not necessary that it will have zero odd day but here you see this is a century which is a leap year so it will have zero number of odd days now now the next thing is now you may want to know you may want to know how we get this data how we come to know that 100 years have 5 odd days 
and 200 years have 3 odd days and so on now if you now you want to learn this we will explain that how we get all this table let us see suppose we have to find the number of odd days in 100 years which is already given is 5 or 5 number of odd days now we will see how we get that 100 years have 5 odd days and about the remaining years so first we see suppose we have years from 1 to 100 we have year 1 2 3 4 5 and so on and then 98 99 100 now you notice that we have 100 years now our aim is to find the number of odd days in the 100 years but first step is our first step will be to find the number of leap years in these 100 years so first we find the number of leap years in these 100 years so you, you must notice that at every fourth step you will find a leap year at 4 this is a leap year 8 this this will be a leap year 12 will be a leap year and so on and then 96 will be a leap year so we can say that at every fourth step we will find a leap year so we divide this 100 by 4 and we will find quotient as 25 but you must notice here that 100 is not a leap year so we minus 1 from 25 and we will get 24 so there are 24 leap years in these 100 years now we know that the year which is not a leap year will be ordinary year so we have 24 years which are leap year now the ordinary year will be 100 minus 24 these are number of leap years and these are total years so 100 minus 24 is 76 76 is the number of ordinary years so we have 76 ordinary year and 24 leap year in 100 years we also know that one ordinary year have one odd day so these 76 ordinary year will have 76 odd day and we also know one leap year have two odd day so these 24 leap year will have 48 odd days okay now we sum these odd days the total number of odd days will be 76 plus 48 that is 124 so we have got 124 number of odd days but we know that number of odd days can only be from 0 to 6 so we divide this so we divide this 124 by 7 and the remainder will be 5 that will be the number of odd days so we have got that 5 is the number of odd days in 100 so we can say 100 years have 5 odd days now we go ahead now we will see how we get that how we come to know that 200 years have 3 odd days we will see this suppose we have 200 years we can write these years as 100 plus 100 we know 100 years we know 100 years have 5 odd days so we write 100 years have 5 odd days and these 100 years have 5 odd day so we have total 10 odd day now again we know that 10 cannot be the value of number of odd day so we divide it by 7 and we will get 3 odd day so we know we come to know that 200 years have 3 odd day that is 200 years have 3 odd day now we come to 300 years we can write these 300 years as 200 plus 100 now we know 200 years have 3 odd days and 100 years have 5 odd days so we write here 200 years have 3 odd day and 100 years have 5 odd day and total we have got 8 odd days we know number of odd days can only be from 0 to 6 and here we have 8 number of odd days so we divide it by 7 and we will get remainder as 1 so that is 1 is the number of odd days in 300 years so we have got 300 years have 1 odd day now we come to 400 years now these 400 
years can be written as 300 plus 100. Now 300 years will have one odd day. You see 300 years have one odd day. So 300 years have one odd day and 100 years have five odd day. So we have got total six odd day. But you must notice here that this 400 year is a leap year. Before 400 we had 300 which was not a leap year. We had 200 which was not a leap year and we had 100 which was also a not a leap year. So but in this case 400 is a leap year and we know a leap year has two odd day. But before this 400 we were taking these ordinary years. We were taking these years as ordinary years. So we were taking only one odd day. But now this is a leap year which have two odd day. So we need one more extra day which is odd day. Or we can say we need one more odd day. So we add one more odd day in this six odd day. Because here 400 is a leap year. And these all are ordinary years. So we have got, we have got seven as the total number of odd days. Six plus one, seven. Total number of odd days. We know odd, number of odd days can only be from zero to six. So we divide it by seven and we will get zero number of odd days. And that's why we have written that 400 years have zero odd day. Okay. Now you must notice that 400 year is this 400 is century which is leap year. So because this is a this has a zero odd day. So if a century is a leap year, it will have zero odd day. Now we go ahead. Now these are the last points which you must remember. After this we will start our examples. Now you see. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are number of odd days. Or and below of this table, below of this list, we can see the days of the week. Now, what I mean is if the number of odd days are 0, then the day will be Sunday. If the number of odd day is 1, then the day will be Monday. And if the number of odd days are 2, then the day will be Tuesday and similarly we can say for the other day. So you must remember this data. Now you must also remember the days of every week. You must remember that January has 31 days and February has 28 days if the year is ordinary year and if the year is a leap year then the February will have 21 29 days so you must remember that that February has 28 days if the year is ordinary year and if the year is leap year February will have 20, 29 days and March have 31 days April have 30 days May have 31 days June have 30 days July have 31 days August have 31 days September have 30 days October have 31 days November have 30 days and December have 31 days. Now an easy way to remember all these days are is you must go in an alternative way. That, that is first remember 31. Then you must remember this. Then again 31. Then 30. Then 31. Then 30. Then 31. Now here you in July and August you must repeat this 31. Then again 30. Then 31. Then 30. Then 31. So you only need to do is 31 and then 30, 31 and then 30. That only you have to need, only you have to remember two points that here we need to remember 28 and 29. And here we have to remember that these 31 days are repeating. Otherwise for the remaining months, we only need to go in alternative way as 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30. You must remember only these two points here 28 and 29 and here these two days these months are repeating as 31 31 or you can find an another way to remember this our aim is to remember this data now we go ahead and now we start examples suppose we have 
to find the day on 21st June of 1911. So we will follow few steps. The first step is you write this year which is given to you 1911 here as it is. You write this year as it is here 1911. Now again you have to write a year which is one less than this year. You see 1910. This year is one less than 1911. So we write here 1910. Now we have two years that is two parts. The first part is 1910 and the second part is 1911. Now we will talk about this second part later. First we solve this first part which is 1910. Now the next next step is you have to take out a century from this year. Listen carefully. You have to take out a century from this year which must be maximum and must be a leap year and must be less than this year 1910. So we have 1600. You notice here this century is maximum in this year and it is also a leap year and it is also not more than 1910 or it is less than 1910. We have another centuries also but we did not take these centuries. We take only these centuries. Let us see why. Here we see this century is 1200. This century is a leap year. But you see, but you see, still we had taken 1600 because 1200 is not maximum. So this was this was maximum. Now we see 1700. Now it is more than this century 1600. But it is not a leap year. So we did not take this, and we did not take this. Now this is a 1800. This is again not a leap year. So we did not take this. Now here you see. 2000. This century is maximum. This century is also a leap year. But still we did not take this century. Why? Because this 2000 is more than this year. This is more than 1910. So we take a century which is maximum and must be a leap year and must be less than this year 1910. Now we go ahead. Now once we have taken out the year the required year then the remaining years we will write here if we take out 1600 then the remaining years in these years are 310 if you add this you will get 1910 so we write remaining years here okay now the next step is to divide again this year we don't need to divide this year we need to divide this year now how we will divide let us see now in this case we have to take out a year or we can say we have to take out a century if it is possible which is maximum. You see 300 is the maximum century in 310. Now there is not it is not necessary that it must be a leap year as was the case in this. The 1600 was necessary to be a leap year but now it is not necessary that this year must be a leap year what you have to do is you take out a century which is maximum in this year so we take out a century 300 which is maximum in this 310 it the 300 must not this year must not be more than this year and we write the remaining year which is 10 here now we have got all the years now we will write or days number of all days for these years so how will write how we will write as we know this is a this is a century and it is a leap year so it will have zero or day you see if a century is a leap year it will have zero or day so this is a this is a century which is a leap year so it will have zero number of all days and we also know that 300 years have one odd day. So these 300 years will have 
one odd day. Now we have ten years. Now we will, we are going to discuss about this ten years in this table. You see here, we need to find the number of odd days in this ten years. So first, what we do is first we calculate or find the number of leap years in these ten years. So we divide it by four, and we will get we will get quotient as two. So two are the number of leap years in ten, and ten minus two will be the eight. That is number of ordinary years. So we have two leap years and eight ordinary years in these ten years, and we also know that one leap year has two odd days. So two leap year will have four odd days, and we also know that one ordinary year have one odd day. So these eight ordinary year will have. Eight odd day. So total number of odd day is eight plus four, twelve. So we have got twelve as the number of total odd days in these ten years. So we have twelve odd days in ten years. Now we sum all these odd days, and we will get total number of odd days as thirteen. So thirteen is the total number of odd days for this first part. Now we come to second part. Now what we will do is, we will calculate the number of odd days for this year, for this given year up to twenty first June. You must remember this. I am repeating. You must listen carefully. For this second part, we are going to find the number of odd days for this year up to twenty first June. So what I am saying is, you need to find the number of odd days. From 1st January of 1911 to 21st Jan June of 1911. So first we will calculate the total number of odd days from 1st January of 1911 to 21st June of 1911. So what we will do is we write the total number of odd total number of days from 1st January to 21st June. So we write January. February, March, April, May, June, up to twenty-first June. So January have thirty-one days. Now you must notice, or you must check every time. You must check every time the year when you come to February. When you come to February, you must see if the year is a leap year or not. Here we see this is a this is not a leap year. This is a ordinary year. So it will have twenty-eight days. You must check. If the year is leap year, then you must write twenty nine days in February. And if this year is a ordinary year, then you must write twenty eight twenty eight or day twenty eight days in February. And here we notice that this is a ordinary year, so we write twenty eight days in February. And now March has thirty one, April has thirty, May has thirty one. And we need to find number of days up to twenty first June. So we write only twenty one days in June. And if we sum all these days, then we will get total one seventy two days. So now we have got total number of days. Once we have no, once we have known the total number of days, we will divide it by seven, and we will get four as the remainder. So four is the number of odd days. Now you see. For this second part, we have got four as the odd day, and for this first part, we have we had we had got thirteen as the number of odd days. So you see, first part has thirteen odd days, and second part has four odd days. So we sum these total odd sum these day odd days, and we will get total seventeen odd days. You see, thirteen plus four, we will get seventeen. As the total number of odd day. Now we know seventeen cannot be the value of number of odd day, so we divide it by seven, and we will get three as the remainder. And this is the final answer. This is the final total number of odd days. Now you see, we had the data. That is, these are number of odd days, and these are days. If the number of odd days, you see, if the number of odd days is three, so we see here the number of odd days is three. Then the day will be Wednesday. So here the day is 
Wednesday. So we quote or we find the final answer that is Wednesday. So you see the day on this date will be Wednesday. Now we go to another example. In many exams and you will find questions like this. If the 1st January of 2015 is Thursday, then what will be the day on 1st January of 2016? So suppose the condition is, suppose that we are present at this date. You have to imagine that because this day is given. So we have to imagine that we are present at this date. So suppose we are at this date. Now we have to find the day on this date. It means we have to go to this date. Suppose that to find the day on this date we will need to go or we will need to reach to this state. So to this date. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is whenever you have given the day on any particular day you must write it first and now suppose that we are present at the date on which the day is given so we imagine that we are present at this date now to reach to this date now our aim is to reach to this date so to reach to this date we will need to go 365 days ahead of this date so if we go 365 days ahead from this date then we will reach to this date so once we find the number of days that is 365 days so what we have to do is you need to divide this 365 by 7 then you will find 1 as the remainder that will be the number of old day now what you have to do is we have given that 1st January of 2015 is Thursday. You see, we have given 1st January of 2015 is Thursday. Now, since the number of odd day is 1, so we go 1 day ahead of this Thursday. Then we will go 1 day ahead of this Thursday. We will find the day which is 1 day after Thursday will be Friday. And this is our final answer. We reach to this date and we have gone one day ahead of this day and we will find Friday. So Friday is our answer. So the day on 1st January of 2016 is Friday. Okay. So we can say that the day on this date is Friday. Now if you want to learn or see more different kind or various kind of examples related to calendar then you must click on the note which has shown to you on the screen. We will continue many different kinds of examples and also these kinds of examples, more examples related to calendars. And if you want to watch them, then click on the note which is, which is shown to you on the screen. I hope you have understood this. Thanks for watching.